All right, let's do some more complicated space-time diagrams. What do we want? Time travel. When do we want it? Irrelevant. Okay, this is a meme taken from another meme. This is getting a very meta meme here. Uh, it's a great joke, of course, but I like it. This comes from uh, hyperbole and a half, I think, with these uh, diagrams here. But anyway, let's talk about space-time diagrams and what happens when you have two different inertial frames. And remember what inertial frame means. Inertial means non accelerating okay that's really important this only works for non-accelerating frames so what we're going to do is we're going to have one frame of reference we're going to call it s and that frame s is going to have coordinates x and ct so instead of just time we're going to put uh, ct so for example we're going to have something like this so we're going to have ct and we're going to have x like this this is how we'll do it and then s primed by the way this will be for frame s that means uh, some sort of frame of reference here. But then on the same axes, we're going to put another frame, S primed. It's going to have coordinates X primed and CT primed, and where S primed is moving with a velocity V according to S. So here, here's what we're doing. We're trying to have one frame of reference and then another frame of reference, and they're going to be drawn on the same diagram. A lot of people kind of freak out when they see these diagrams, okay? So I'm going to just show you. It's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. I'm trying to start off by making it look easy. Uh, I like this joke here, lost wormhole. And in case you can't read it, it says, do not attempt to uh, capture because you'll totally screw up the space-time continuum, bro. And of course, it goes within. So let, let's look at this right here for space-time axes. So we have S primed frame. We have X prime T, C T primed. And here's what's going to happen. Okay, so I'll just explain what this all means here. So if we have this y-axis and this x-axis here, okay, this is frame S, I'm going to be drawing this line right here, which is, it's like saying y equals x. So in this case, this line ct equals x. That's the path of a beam of light. So in other words, you can't, you can't go faster than the speed of light. So this is going to be some path right here that you can't really cross. You can be on one side of it or the other. Well, you can cross it, but you'll see you can be at, uh, you have to be perpendicular or I'll show you with an example. You'll see that'll be more clear. But we define something. We define the angle theta, and I'll show you what I mean by this. The angle theta will be the inverse tangent of V over C. Basically, what we're saying is that tangent of theta is v over c that's really what we're trying to say and where where is this angle you know because i was talking about this here how we would have this whole thing right here how do we draw this extra one we're going to draw it like this watch carefully here we're going to have um here i'll draw like this so what we do is this frame s that's this one that's the original frame we have frame s prime which is going to be at a different uh thing what we do we draw on the same axis, we're going to draw, let's say this right here could be F, uh, so this right here could be X primed. Now I want you to notice very carefully here, there is an angle here technically. There's an angle between the frame S's position or space and frame S primed. Because anything that's going to be in sort of purple like this, that's going to be frame, I'll do it like this, frame S primed. So what's going to happen is this. We're, this is going to be symmetric. So whatever angle this is, we're going to have the same angle here. So I have to try to draw at the same angle. Whatever that was, let's see, like that. It'll be about like this, I think. Something like that. So what happens is this. This space-time axis for S primed, in other words, this purple one, is angled towards the line CT equals X. In other words, that line that was this um, Y equals X line here, Right? That's what this really looks like. It looks like y equals x. Um, they're going to be, those those axis lines are going to be angled towards it. So as this angle gets bigger and bigger, those things right there will get more and more towards it, for example. So you could be like, you could be like that, for example. Uh, that would be even faster, so to speak, right? Uh, slower would be, you know, until it opens up, until you're going zero speed, then you're at frame S. So do you see that? So frame S prime, that's how it works. Now we have to define this angle right here. This angle tells us something about the speed. See, remember what I said, if the angle is zero, uh, then the speed's gonna be zero, because tan of zero is zero. Um, and if the angle is 45 degrees, uh, actually it turns out that that right there is when uh, you get one here, because uh, V is equal to C. So we're gonna see the different cases. 
Now here's what's going to be really wacky. Okay, a lot of you have really struggled with this. I'm going to try to show you this a little bit simpler. So same, oops, the same sort of idea here. I'm going to try to draw this. I'm going to show this so the coordinates of space time for s are read directly from the axes. In other words, if you want to know where something sits, let's just say like, I don't know, some point a, let's just say, oops, some point a right there. You could say, oh, where is a sitting? Well, in space, it's in x and in uh, time, it's over here, whatever this is. But you could say, well, what is it in the s prime thing? That gets a bit more wacky. So that's why I'm going to try to show you how to do this. So I'm going to redraw those same sort of axis lines like this right here. Okay, so I'll try to draw something like this and another one. Let's just assume, and remember it has to be the same angle. So whatever the angle, you know, whatever angle this right here was here, I have to make that same angle here. So something, it's not perfect, right? But something like this. As long as I label it theta and theta, then I'm okay. Remember, this is x primed, this is ct primed. All right, this is for frame s primed here. That's what this is. And here we have this line, you know, our y equals x here, this light. Here's what we do then. We take this, and this seems really weird, but all these lines, these draw lines parallel to ct primed and the x primed axes. What does this mean? This means that you have to think about this like two different graphs at the same time. I mean, normally, if I want to do like on the y-axis, I could have lots of parallel lines to the y's, right? And I can have lots of parallel lines to the uh, x's as well, right? But now, because these are angled, I have to have parallel lines to those weird angled things. I'm going to have angles like this and ones like this. So I'll show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to draw them as dotted lines, maybe just to make it a little bit easier to look at. But watch. This is CT prime, so I'm going to make another line that's parallel to it, maybe here. Something like that, until it runs into that line, right? Because everything has to be located within this little region here. So I'll do another one, maybe like this, and another one, just to show you how this here goes. Should have roughly equal spacing. And I have to draw lines parallel to the X prime axis, so maybe I draw one like this. So don't get too freaked out when you see these weird dotted lines like this. You really got to think about them. These are separated things, okay? This is how you're going to read some coordinates. So in other words, if I wanted to read some value right here, for example, I could read it directly from the X, uh, like in frame S, I could say, oh, it's got a value of, you know, whatever this value is, and I go straight across here for that one. So it's that whatever this is and whatever this is. However, on this sort of purple axis, on this S primed, I could read it as here, I follow these parallel weirdo lines here. So it would be this value right here. Do you see that? It would be, let me just put it here. It would be this in the X primed axis, and it would be whoosh, this in the T primed axis. So those would be the coordinates. We read the coordinates here and here. That seems really weird, huh? Now let's do an example. This might blow your mind because there's a lot happening. That's why I felt like a little bit like Jaden Smith here. This is like, so here we have an example. Same idea, okay? So just so you know, I've basically redrawn just like this, okay? I've started off with one of these diagrams. Imagine I took this, I copied it, and I pasted it. So I've still got frame S, and I've got frame S primed. See that? Here's frame S in black. Here's frame S primed in purple. I've got my axes labeled CT primed and X primed. Do you notice I've got these parallel weirdo lines parallel to CT primed? And I've got my parallel lines parallel to the X primed. So I've actually got the same thing going on. And just for fun, I also drew the light line, like the line of the beam of light. So if you want to draw something like this, you can make uh, feel free to draw something like this on your own. Just make sure that when you draw it like this right here, just be really careful where A sits. A is supposed to be exactly lined up with the two here. So, uh, so A and B are supposed to be at the same sort of height in this X axis here, this, uh, sorry, Y axis here. So this one right here. So if we look at this carefully, let's look at that. Let's answer the question then. So do A and B happen simultaneously? Let's look at different frames. Let's look at uh, in frame S, let's just say. So in S, what happens? If you're in frame S, that means look at only the black so look at events A and B. Do they happen simultaneously? That means same time. Notice they're in different space points, like one is over here and one is over here, right? So they clearly don't happen in the same location in the black. You have to just look at the black axes here. So no, they don't happen uh, simultaneously. So I'll say no, not an S. But how about an S? Oh, wait, hold on a second. 
That was same location I was asking about. Same time, simultaneously, that means time. Should they happen at the same time? Yes, in S, actually, we could say yes. They happen simultaneously because, do you notice they both have the same time? At a time uh, two, let's just say. So at time two, that right there works. So they both happen at time two years, for example. So yes. How about an S primed? Let's look at that. An S primed, we have to read things now in sort of purple land. So if you look at this then, um, they do not happen in the same because uh, remember this here now is how you go up in time. So this is like zero time, this is some other number time, maybe it's two, we have to relabel them, but this is maybe four, this is six, eight, let's just say. So this here happens at, look at this one right here, event A happens at zero time. So yeah, if you follow it along right here, it's height, so to speak, is zero. So A happens at zero time, B happens at time two. So we could say no, not in that one. You could say A happens uh, before B. Let's just say, so before B. Let's do the relative velocity of S prime with respect to S. Uh oh, how do we find the velocity from this? Well, remember that equation we had? Remember that equation, whoops, right here, that angle theta equals inverse tan of v over c. Or in other words, you could say that theta, uh, sorry, tan theta equals v over c. That's another version. So let's look at that. So tan theta equals v over c. How do we do this? Well, we need to figure out the angle theta, don't we? So we need to figure out what is the angle theta. Well, let me just put it right here. That's this angle right here. Well, I actually know something about it. You notice if you look carefully at this thing right here, I can actually figure out that angle. I know the height. This height is actually two. So I know that's two here. And I know that the, how far it goes in the x direction, that's eight. I know tangent of this, because I can say tan theta equals, let's see, remember how Soka Toa works, sine, cosine, tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's two over eight. Now I can just leave it like this, actually, that's okay. Maybe I should make the fraction a little bit nicer, so tan theta equals one over four. Therefore, I can say then that, Keep going then. So that means then I know that one over four then, because that's tan of theta, that equals v over c. Therefore, to get v by itself, I just put the c on top. One over four is 0.25. So I could say v equals 0.25c. Isn't that kind of magical? Just from this graph, I can tell the speed of frame s prime compared to s. Next question: Do c and d happen at the same location? Let's look at this now. So C and D, let's see. Same location. Let's look at in frame S, at least what happens. In frame S, remember that's using the black axis here. C and D. Look at C happens at some value of, I don't know, whatever that is. And D happens at some value of whatever that is. Clearly those are not the same location, so no. However, in S prime, let's look at what happens. C and D in S prime, let's see. This is location now is along this purple axis here. C and D are along that same dotted line. So they happen at the same location, so yes. Same location in S primed, but not same location there. So that's it's kind of interesting to see what happens here. And last, can a pulse of light go from A to D? In other words, can we draw, let's see, I'll just try to draw like this. Can a pulse of light travel from here to here? Let's look at what happens here. Um, I'm going to actually answer this right here, so let's just see here. So we, here we can say uh, yes in both frames, we could say that. So I'll say that actually, yes in both frames. Now, how is that the case? If you look at in the S frame, if you send a, some light, light is just not allowed to go back in time, so to speak. So just in the X, uh, sorry, in the um, black axis here in frame S. If you look at this, if you think about it, you're at position eight, you want to send them, so eight light years, and you want to send a beam of light to this one right here. Can you get it there? Well, you have to look at how much time it takes, goes from two to whatever this value right here is. But it turns out the trick to knowing these right here is that you can only go perpendicular to something. In other words, the most you can go is perpendicular. So in other words, uh, 90 degrees to this thing. So the best you can do is to go like, so this is, I'm trying to draw a line that's perpendicular. So something like, something like this, you know where this angle is like 
that. I'm trying to draw like some perpendicular line. I've drawn it very poorly actually. Let me try again. Let's try to draw a perpendicular line here. Something like this here. Something that's perpendicular, that would be something like this. This would be here, something that's perpendicular. So it turns out, yes, you can send this um, signal. It, as long as you're within that perpendicular line or some angle bigger than this right here, you can, you can send this. This is possible. But you can't go like this. You can't do that. So that'll be kind of interesting to see. So for example, um, you cannot send it from A to B. Let's actually look at this. Um, let's do A to B. Let's see if you can do that. Can you do it in frame S? And can you do it in frame S prime? Let's see. In frame S, could you possibly go from A to B? Well, no, you can't because that's at the same time. Do you notice? Like that's that's the same time here. So in other words, at eight light years, you can't be at um, eight light years away and then get to zero light years away or whatever value this is in no time at all. So we can say no there. And S primed, can you possibly do that? In order to send it in the S primed frame, in other words, in the purple one right here, you'd have to go from A to B right here. You'd have to go basically back in time. In other words, you would have to travel so far in such a short period of time, because you just go up by one sort of unit here. And again, it's because you're, can you see this perpendicular line? You've gone sort of behind it. So no, you can't do it there. So what about sending a signal from A to C? Could you do that? Is that possible? Um, again, in frame, let's see here, frame S and S primed. No, you can't do it in S because again, you've gone, uh, you've gone sort of backwards in, you've got basically have to go faster than the speed of light in both frames. It turns out this one here. So this one here will be no there and no there as well. Because again, you've gone sort of, you, you have to go faster than the speed of light in order to get it there. So that's obviously impossible. You can only go perpendicular or sort of, or more. So this is why it's no, 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 but yes in both frames. In both frames, you could send a signal from A to D, but not the other ones. I hope that helps. This is a bit mind-blowing stuff, right? Maybe you feel a little bit like Jaden Smith, like, you know, but this is how we can deal with the much more complicated versions here, okay? And the key is to not panic when you see all these crazy lines going on, but to just think of it as two different drawings. There's the one that's perpendicular, and there's the one then of the... Uh, moving frame and those get sort of angled towards that line and remember as you go faster and faster and faster they the angle approaches that line uh, y equals x um, so i hope that helps i hope you feel a little bit better about this crazy stuff